It's time for love readings. You're going to get the most out of this love reading if you watch it for your moon sign. This video right here, if you haven't seen it, will tell you why. There's a link in the description box below so you can go right to that to find out why. Um, but regardless of whether you're watching this for your moon sign, which you should be, um, or, or not, whatever, um, I just wanna tell you what we are covering today. What do you need to let go of? Um, what what are you attracting this month in regards to love? What's out of your control? And then what act, what do you need to take action on? We're going to look at singles, couples, and then it's complicated situations. So that could be polyamorous. Maybe um, you're talking to each other, but it's not Facebook official yet. On again, off again, whatever that is. I'm going to do singles first, then couples, and then it's complicated last. The reason being because sometimes when it's complicated, pieces of the single reading and the couple's reading will resonate hard for you and you might wanna go and watch those pieces as well, okay? Um, I think I already said, but this reading is from now until June 15th. Um, and the reason why I go half month to half month is because I put out the general readings at the beginning of every month and then money readings um, also right after that. So let's get started. Oh, I'm using the Gilded Tarot deck today. If you're wondering what that's about, there's a link in the description box below if you wanna purchase one. I don't sell them, but um, if you get it through the affiliate link, I might get like two or three cents from that and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So you're just helping a sister out to keep making these videos. Scorpio. Scorpio singles, what do you need to let go of in your relate, or, um, in your quest to finding love this month. And they're saying, well, you're not really manifesting anything. And so if you wanna have love, if you wanna find the love of your life, your soulmate, your true match, well then, we've gotta figure that out. Um, right here, this is what it looks like. There is on my uh, blog page, there's a link down in, in the description box below, a resource that'll help you figure out exactly what that is. There's all sorts of things actually on the free downloads page. You don't have to put in an email or anything. Like I'm not gonna spam you and steal your address. You just go and get them. Um, it'll help you to figure out number one, what do you want? And then number two, how to manifest it, okay? Um, so you could maybe use this vision board one as well. So anyway, what we need to let go of or drop or stop doing is basically nothing, not identifying what it is we want. If you're going out there and you're trying to meet people, you're trying to date, you know, grow relationships, see where they go, but we don't really know what we want and we don't know, you know, um, then how do we know what's gonna be the right match? What's gonna be happy for us, okay? Um, it's easy to, and it's beautiful to have this idea that like when you just know, you know, right? But if you have no idea what it is that is right for you, at least right now in your life, what it is that you want from your relationships, then how are you even supposed to draw that close to you? Unless you're just gonna try a little of everything, but then even by that way, like you should still know what you don't like and what you do. Do you see what I mean? So let's just focus on what it is that we want for our relationships so that we make the right matches and we don't waste anybody else's time nor our own. Um, also, we need to let go of any fears that we have um, that we're not going to be able to find the right person and that we're not capable of figuring out what we even want. Like, oh, I'm afraid I'll never figure out what I want. Well, that's not true. You will. And it's really easy. And if it's not easy, then it will be easy when you look at that worksheet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so for some of you, you've moved past the fear part, though. Um, you're not afraid of attracting the wrong type of person. It's just more you're afraid you're not gonna find the right kind of person. And um, for some of you, that makes you sad. For others of you, you just kind of remain open and you're gonna try what comes your way. But you know, um, it would just be easier if we instantly attracted the right kind of person, right? And so all of that will help you with that. So what is it that you are attracting right now? And they're saying honest people, good communicators. So that's fantastic. People who are strong and reliable, who speak to you respectively. Fantastic. Um, what's outside of your control this month in regards to finding um, the right partner? For some of you, I would say for the majority of you, actually, 60% of you that are single, at least, um, it's just that the right person is not has not exited the wrong relationship yet in order to end up with you. 
Um, so for those of you that that's not the case, that your person is out there, they're saying it's really just about knowing what you deserve and asserting it, like kind of confidently stepping into the dating scene, whether that is online or whatever, it's like, hey, here's me, I'm awesome, you wanna get with it, cause I'm awesome, and like shining that light. You know, nobody's gonna, the right person isn't gonna see that as narcissistic or cocky or whatever. If they view you that way, they're not fucking for you, okay? Um, so what, do you need to take action on in order to find the right person? And they say for some of you, it's a challenge to even believe that you can have a happy, long lasting forever type of relationship. Some of you don't really believe that. Somewhere in your subconscious, you don't think that happens for people. Um, for others of you, it's just like that you literally can't go places. Okay, like it's hard to date right now and <laughs> for people who are social distancing, right? Um, but, like they're saying you don't really have to go places in order to do that necessarily. Like you could start to build a bond online or like start um, communicating with people, doing Zoom dates or something like that. Um, the biggest thing is to number one, believe that happy, long, lifetime lasting relationships do exist. And then number two, for most of you, it's really just figuring out what would make me happy? What kind of a partner do I want? That's the hardest thing, okay? Now, for those of you that are in relationships, um, what do you need to let go of in your relationship to make it better? And they're saying, um, so all of this fire and this passion and this excitement um, can sometimes not be a good thing. Maybe you want more sex than your partner is giving you. Um, maybe you accidentally pressure them for that a little bit more um, than they want and that could create some resentment or a rift in your relationship. Or maybe you just need more passion and excitement and they're not really giving that to you right now. And so then you're starting to feel trapped and kind of stuck in this relationship. You know, like you need to spice it up. Um, and so what they're saying is maybe in letting go of some of that sexual fire passion energy and focusing more on the other parts of the relationship because those have value too, um, then some of that will come back if it's less of a focus. Okay, so what is it that you're attracting into your life right now? Um, balance, justice, fairness. So that's good at least. You're attracting that into your relationship, but you're going to achieve it even better if we're able to make like sex and passion and lust a little bit less of a focus. Um, what's outside of your control in your relationship? Um, they say like the details of that are not important. So maybe nothing <laughs> for you. Um, what do you need to take action on? And they're like, so the day-to-day -day routine, what do you expect? And then like not bitching about it. So, you know, maybe things have become monotonous. Let's try not to complain about it though. Um, let's change it up in other ways instead of just expecting the change to happen in the bedroom. So, I mean, I'm, they're not saying that maybe, you know, doing it every Thursday, um you know doggy style that's our routine um and that's getting boring and you want to change it up and maybe you want to have sex on tuesdays missionary style or something like that they're not saying that's wrong okay but what they are saying is instead of saying hey let's let's change this up a little why don't you change things up a little in the relationship in other areas okay like um maybe every tuesday is taco tuesday why don't we have instead a tater tuesday or something um or you know or maybe you do the dishes and usually your partner does changing other areas of the relationship can help you get what you want in the bedroom basically is what they're saying okay for those of you in it's complicated situations what do you need to let go of? Um, they're like, well, okay, nothing really right now because everything takes time. You already know that, like what it is that needs to be let go of, but you're like slow pulling the Band-Aid instead of fast ripping it and that's okay, that's good. Um, they're saying, what 
you're kind of like looking for excitement, something to be excited about. And if you're not getting it from who you're dealing with right now, then maybe it is time to try to find that elsewhere or at least not have an expectation that somebody is gonna make you feel excited all the time, okay? Maybe not putting that on them. They're saying like the challenge is that everything just feels like it's slow paced, like it's slow moving, like you don't get what you want the second that you want it. That's obviously hard all the time for everyone, right? Um, but there's nothing you can really do about it. Things take the time that they take, unfortunately. So what are you attracting into your love life right now? And they're saying stability, um, you know, something that is reliable. So if that's what you want, good. But you also want that excitement. I get that. Um, and it seems like you might want like exciting texts or um, it, like to, yeah, it's like text messages really like, like sex texts, you know, like sex, sex. Why is that so hard on the mouth? Um, but yeah, like you want to have something to look forward to, right? Um, and you can't really control whether people do that or not. But if you're a person who makes things exciting, then maybe they follow suit, okay? Um, lead by example, essentially, is what they're saying. So what's outside of your control this month in your love life? And they say, well, you're moving towards a place of like more emotional calm and stability than you've been in historically in the past. So that's good, but it's not necessarily because of you. <laughs> um, they're saying, you know, there are things going on with your day-to-day -day life, with your money, with your job, or lack of a job or whatever, like things going on in the world that you can't control, but like, um, you're slowly coming to terms with those things and I feel like that's really going to benefit you in this situation. So is there anything that you need to do, take action on to get what you want? And they're just saying, um, so right now your energy is a little bit defensive and so you can put walls up and push people away a little bit. Try to be a little bit more open if you can. Um, even like when people compliment you instead of like, oh, no, no, no. Just be like, oh, thank you. That makes me feel really good. The littlest things like that can help open up that heart chakra so you can start getting what you want. They're saying for you, this is going to be a long, long, like extra super long and slow process, but it's baby steps every day, becoming more and more comfortable with that. They're saying, you know, part of the reason why you're doing that or feeling this way is because not because people haven't always talked nicely to you. They haven't always complimented you. They haven't always told you the truth. And so we have built walls okay in order to try to protect ourselves but honestly we're not protecting ourselves from anything we're creating an illusion that we can protect ourselves for ourselves to feel more comfortable with the situation but whether so whenever people do things that are hurtful right it still hurts whether we were prepared for the hurt or not we're not less hurt okay we're just feeling the hurt in advance of the hurt that was coming so there's no reason to have those walls up so how do you tear them down they're like well you don't really want to. So wanting to tear them down, wanting to be open and vulnerable, wanting to be, you know, sensitive is kind of the first step. So work on that. Um, so I love you so much and I'll see you next month.